There was a rich man, Jesus tells us, called, well, he didn't have a name. He remains anonymous. He remains unknown to the history of the gospel. But there was a poor man, his name was Lazarus. He is known. His name does remain. He is eternalized in a sense. So different from the values of this world and the priorities of this world, where we know the names of the rich and famous and the poor and insignificant and marginalized are forever anonymous. For God, it's different. He remembers those who suffer. And Lazarus suffered greatly all his life. He was poor, very ill, sores all over his body, Jesus tells us. And he lived on the street, outside the home of the rich man. And every day the rich man would walk past him. Every day the rich man would live comfortably, in luxury, eating well, Jesus tells us, feasting sumptuously. But he never once gave Lazarus anything. He never once considered him. He probably did not even notice him. And they both die. And Jesus tells us that the rich man goes to Hades, to hell, and the poor man is taken to Abraham's embrace, to heaven. And between them, there is a, a great abyss or a chasm. And the rich man can see over and he sees Lazarus now in this beautiful place and he calls Abraham, their common father, the ancestors of the Hebrew people. And he says to him, tell Lazarus' father to come over and just to dip his finger in some water that my thirst may be quenched. But Abraham tells him this is impossible because there is a great abyss, a great chasm between them. And in any case, he says, you've had the good things in life. And now it's Lazarus's turn. And then the rich man makes a very special appeal to Jesus. And he says, well, at least then send him back to the earth, to my brothers, to my family, to warn them about this place so that they won't end up here. And then Jesus finishes the story and he turns to the people listening to him and he says, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, if they do not hear, in other words, the word of God as it has been proclaimed by all his messengers, then they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. And of course, he was referring to himself at that point. Brothers and sisters, we often don't notice those that are around us unless they can give us something, unless they can offer us something emotionally, psychologically, financially, socially. There are those around us who are unknown, invisible, in one way or another marginalized. And I suppose socially and socioeconomically we can see that in our society and further in the world. But I wonder how many there are on the fringes of our lives whom we bypass. We don't want to ignore, but we just don't have the time. How many there are who would seek from us, as Lazarus sought, says he wanted to have just the crumbs that fell from his master's table. Perhaps these people don't need breadcrumbs. Perhaps they need the crumbs of our time, the crumbs of our love, the crumbs of our attention. Perhaps these people just need 
to be noticed and given a name. Lazarus was known to God and was forever known to us. The rich man was known to God, of course, but he goes down in history nameless. Those that are first become last, and those that are last become first. Today's gospel calls us to come out of ourselves, to step beyond our own needs, real as they may be, important as they may be, and to look to the other. Because in the face and in the needs of the other, we are going to find the kingdom of heaven.